Chapter 16, Israel's Annual Atonement Ceremony, called Yom Kippur. Now, there's that word that we learned, Kippur, meaning cover, which translates to atonement, so payment for sins. So every year, there's this Day of Atonement. It actually is still practiced today in Judaism. So it's the holiest day in Judaism. The high priest makes atonement for the nation's sin. Atonement day was really meant to deal with the transgressions or the intentional sins of the nation. So it's a day of repentance. It's a day of fasting and it's a day of prayer. So we learn in Christianity that Jesus is is the ultimate high priest and Jesus made atonement for our sins. Bigger message that Leviticus chapter 16 teaches us is this atonement that Jesus paid for it already. So it's already atoned for, meaning the debt has been paid off for all of humanity. All right, my favorite part is this part. Someone is coming throughout the entire Old Testament. We have this theme, this plot, this essence that someone is coming, and it started in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Now, animal sacrifices promise forgiveness, but it never took away sin. Now, I'm not saying that those animal deaths were meaningless. Yes, they offered forgiveness, but not remission or not cancellation of debt. So forgiven, but sins not taken away. The good news that we have is fulfilled in the New Testament that Jesus fulfilled the law. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, it tells us the new covenant, no need for animal sacrifices. We learn that salvation cannot be earned. We are forgiven by repenting of sins and trusting in the completed work of Jesus Christ, the shedding of his blood. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for, there it is, remission of sin. So the cancellation of debt. Remember Eve signed us up for this long interest loan? Well, Jesus paid that off. He is our atonement or our compensation or our payment for that. So this book or the Mosaic law, its purpose is to identify sin. So in the New Testament or in the New Covenant in Romans chapter 7 verse 7, it says, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So I wouldn't know what covet meant unless I read the Old Testament and said, thou shalt not covet. So I would not know what covet meant, but the law taught covetedness. These rules no longer apply is what I'm saying. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. His death and his blood is the real atonement or real payment for all human sin. So Hebrews, again, in the New Testament, and I'm sorry if you've not read the Bible before, uh, I just want you to understand that we no longer have to be bound to these laws. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 tells us, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So the offering or the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So no longer must we practice these things. It is finished. Jesus said it on the cross. So if you guys are really geeking out like I love to geek out, go to Hebrews chapter 8 and it'll kind of describe the whole new covenant that we entered in with Christ. So to return to this old system is really to return to something that is no longer valid or no longer effective.